So 10 years ago, an article was released entitled 10 Predictions for Electronic Music Making in the Next Decade. And way back, I actually saved this article stating that once 2021 got here, I'd need to do a retrospective on the accuracy of its predictions. So shout out to Syntopia.com as this article is actually from them in December of 2010. So in this video, I wanna talk about the predictions from that article, what came true, and how far we've come a decade later. So number one, modular synthesis goes mainstream. Now, this is more or less an easy one to see that absolutely came true. The article mentions that modular synths were already becoming more affordable, stating the Minimo Voyager XL that was released in 2010 had added modular capabilities. And well, we've come a very, very long way from having to purchase a $3,000 plus Moog synth to get into the world of modular. Heck, back then we didn't even have the professor, DivKit himself, to show us the way into modular until three years later. Eurac has made modular smaller, cheaper, more accessible, and the range of companies and modular selection is better than it's ever been. So where does it go from here? And has the modular hype died down? Oh. I personally don't know, but the evolution from 2010 to now is nothing short of impressive. Number two, the music robots join the band. So probably no one can tell me an accessible way of an everyday musician doing what Pat Metheny did with his orchestrion. Uh, the original article points out that this was the possible transition to robots and music. And me personally, I'd say that we came to a place of software-based robotic band members in the real world. And this came in the form of AI generated instruments. And some experimental work has been done in terms of Holly Herndon's Eternal, where she harmonizes with an AI version of herself. So the article wasn't wrong and it wasn't exactly what they spoke about in terms of physical robots making music in sessions. But the further we move away from having the physical sessions with people, the closer we move towards AI being a viable alternative, even live. Number three, handheld music becomes the norm. So, I, I mean, let's be honest, the power of handheld music devices has gone nuts over the last decade. I could record an entire album on the entry-level iPad two years ago, and I know people doing this long before I was. So the integration between app and hardware is where it's really at. Now, just look at something like the Modal Craft or the Modal Sculpt, each with a very decent app, in my opinion. This article was written in 2010, and in October of that next year, Moog's very own Annie Moog was released, which bringing a company with such a lineage and hardware to the app music making world was huge. So they bought in really early. We're getting more mobile than ever, and with companies like Teenage Engineering really embracing the fine line between handheld toy and pro instrument with things like the OP1, which was actually released in 2011. Who needs to sit at home when processors in your phone are getting as good as the processors in desktops with things like the M1 chips? Compact, functional musical devices are only getting more important as time goes on. So speaking about the future synths, well, I wanna talk about the current state of handheld synthesizers and where I think we might be going in the future. Now, this Craftsman 2.0 is great and I enjoy it, but it's ultimately a glorified dongle for an iPad app. Something like the Superlative Instruments SB01. Now, I wanna state I have no involvement or association with Superlative. I think that this is a really good example of things that I see in terms of like future handhelds. Now, I know that talking about actually being able to put a rechargeable battery into the SB01 is not a big deal to a lot of people, but when we're still using AA batteries and synthesizers nowadays, it seems sort of strange as if most every other industry has moved over to rechargeable lithium ion batteries. You have the 3340 voltage controlled oscillators, which some people might know from a certain design. These are replicas of course, but can you see where I'm going here? It's got a more streamlined, robust, it's got a unibody design and it's lightweight. You could even say it's aerodynamic. These are all the things that other industries have moved closer to and bringing the hybridization of both the old and the new is what I think that we're looking forward to in the world of handhelds. So number four, you'll design your own instruments. So this is actually something I've really wanted to see over the last decade, but I haven't seen it come to life all the way. So who wouldn't want to almost do a paint by numbers, analog digital hybrid synthesizer, where you can pick the amount of oscillators and the filter choices, the effects, the color scheme, a wrap or pattern. Now, I think that's the dream in my opinion. 
While of course Eurorack allows for a ton of customization, it's not really at the point where you're making the, your exact vision, right? Though as components get smaller and 3D printing gets cheaper, PCB printing is closer than we think. Maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to design a Leopard Print 12 Oscillator Monster Synth that we did on a web UI on a casual bus ride. The guy can dream, right? <laughs> So number five, cloud-based music making will get real. So I had to kind of double check on how this applied based on the original article. So in 2018, Steinberg released a product called VST Transit and VST Go, allowing music collaboration from anywhere, even apparently on the mobile app. And while I haven't personally used either, and maybe I need to, uh, sometimes things like this just really get lost in me. And I wonder how large the actual user base can be. Maybe someone out there can tell me if doing this type of collaboration via the VST Go or VST Transit actually can check number five off the list. Number six, you'll see musicians getting electronic music body modifications. So this might be a little tougher to pinpoint as the article speaks about maybe embedding sensors possibly into your flesh. And I haven't seen any of that personally, but back in 2013, there was this thing called Mind MIDI created by Aaron Thalman. And basically using software he created, you could make music with just your brain waves. So on a more accessible level though, the article speaks of wirelessly transmitting movements into expression and things like the wave by Genki Instruments, a ring that you wear to give your instrument sort of MIDI commands um, with just your hand movement. This is totally real, and I tried it out at NAMM last year. So maybe we haven't become music cyborgs since 2011, but you can't say we didn't make progress. Number seven, everything will become a musical instrument. And I mean, we've come to a place where micro sampling is totally possible. And with the manipulation capabilities of almost any DAW, you can stretch, resample, repitch, uh, lay it across a keyboard and make an entire song out of anything. I mean, who hasn't seen the Billie Jean doorstopper video on YouTube? Need I say more? So number eight, music software will get smarter. And I mean, can we not say that this hasn't happened in every single DAW imaginable? Speaking personally, I use Cubase and a decade ago, I feel like I could only quantize MIDI in Cubase and over the last decade, you can now quantize audio in Cubase and even use algorithms to evaluate your input better. Now, like the article says, you could just hum a line in Cubase, quantize it, change the audio now to MIDI, and then use that as say a bass line or any sort of other instrument just by hooking up another instrument. I don't think anyone out there can disagree that the DAWs haven't got smarter and better. So absolutely mission accomplished. Number nine, you'll have to rethink everything you know about the music industry. And this, in my opinion, is by far the easiest to see by all of us. 10 years ago, I was still going shopping at Amoeba Music in Los Angeles to pick up UCDs, downloading the music from them to my iTunes library. And we were still paying for each and every track on iTunes. Spotify was in its infancy in 2011 and had only entered the US market in July of that year. Look now, a decade later and Spotify is the premier streaming service who, who actually pays for individual albums and not just subscriptions. In 2019, Apple announced it was shutting down iTunes, meaning Apple Music is the future. While in 2011, the archaic recording industry had a stranglehold over artist releases and now you can release anything on these platforms. And while labels still impose their will with paying for playlisting, nothing changed more than the industry as I knew it a decade later. Number 10, music will become intelligent. So just the other day, I actually listened to some AI music created on a Skrillex song. And while it was marginally terrible, AI has a place in music and I think a great place in it is in the world of content creation. While not everyone knows a specific artist they want for their content, you can make AI generated music in a browser with a few mouse clicks and never see that dreaded music copyright email in your inbox again. I still believe that the humanness of an artist and the story behind them is what is important to a certain portion of listeners because unique voices and sounds aren't just in algorithms, but heck, AI is already here and it's in a web browser for free, so spot on.
So after looking back, what do I predict for electronic music making over the next decade from say 2021 to 2031? And well, I honestly don't know because looking back, the technology has changed immensely, but the actual process of making music continues to stay the same. It's inspiration plus talent, follow through and then execution is what equals the release of finished works. So the actual prices of equipment will continue to plummet because when this original article was released, the Arturia Mini Brute wasn't even a thing. And that opened the door to $500 genuine hardware analog synthesizers, an offering that could only be looked at on as a turning point from bedroom musicians aspiring to own analog hardware to its actual obtainment of such items. My hope for the future is that hardware and software become even more intertwined. And with offerings from companies such as Modal, Teenage Engineering, Erica Synth, we're closer than ever. I don't know about the whole body modifications actually happening to the point of implants, but better implemented wearables, absolutely. So guys, in the comments section, let me know what your predictions are for electronic music making over the next decade. I honestly wanna see them. Maybe you could make 10 of them if you have time. So remember to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. That was released in 2020. Maybe someone can tell me of an accessible way that... <sighs> Dang, the freaking plane, dog. To have the accessibility to with the orchestrion, orchestrion. We're getting to the compact, well, in, oh, compact with function. I've, number, number five, cloud-based music. So number five, cloud-based music making. So number five, cloud-based music making. Big body man. Einberg's release call, you can say, okay, I think I can do that better. 10 years ago, I was still going to immune and turn that into, and I've never, I mean, tons of uh, Twitch 